Treasure hunting seems like the most lucrative archaeological job. This is why people love to watch Indiana Jones run away from boulders and pretend to be Nathan Drake or Lara Croft jumping from great heights to find the hidden wealth of our ancestors. But unlike what pop culture depicts, archaeologists do not hunt these treasures for their monetary value. They seek them for what knowledge they might have to offer about the people they belong to in the past. Yet sometimes, no matter how expensive and lavish these treasures are, they might make historians scratch their heads to find logic about their existence. Welcome to Crunch. Today, we are crunching mysterious ancient artifacts that left archaeologists confused. Lavish Curses Modern Serbia came under Roman rule about the 1st century BC and stayed under Roman and later Byzantine rule until the Slavic invasions happened in the 6th century. Today, the archaeological site of Viminasium occupies a total of 450 hectares, or 1,100 acres, making it larger than the Roman city of Pompeii. At its peak, it is believed to house more than 40,000 people. It contains remains of temples, streets, gold, amphitheaters, palaces, hippodromes, Roman baths and tombs. All of these ancient relics are priceless in the eyes of historians. It was hard to have fair justice back then, and people were highly supernatural. Hey, that sounds like the modern world we live in. But we digress. Curse tablets were one of the methods Romans and their colonies used back in the day to console themselves in case they wanted to bring harm to someone, especially if it was a case of vengeance and injustice. These curse tablets were written in Latin or Greek, mostly asking the deliverance from a god or a demon to befell their enemies. These curses were highly personal and vengeful, such as the one found in the ancient city of Amethyst in Cyprus. The curse tablet was found in 2008 and bore the inscription, May your genitals hurt when you make love. Even when Christianity began to spread in the Roman Empire, even Christ and the Holy Spirit were invoked through these cursed tablets. These flat, rectangular Roman tablets were inscribed commonly in lead and were cut from hammered or thinly cast sheets, which were then trimmed down. Amazingly though, the cursed tablets archaeologists unearthed at the Serbian historical site were not made of lead or stone, but of precious gold and silver. They were mostly written in Greek, but also contained another language that is lost to time and had magical symbols inscribed on them. What was this ancient language and what was the purpose of it is still a mystery for modern historians. The language appears to be Aramaic, but the script used is Greek. Whether the second language was used to connect to the gods, contact demons, or perhaps it was a message from otherworldly images, the reason is yet to be found. Ancient Cosmological Discovery very last month, a farmer in the Czech Republic unearthed something ornate on his beet farm, which was a surprise of a lifetime for him. The shocking object was covered in dirt, but well-preserved, and if he had sold it, he would have made a fortune. And yet this honest man who wishes to remain anonymous, despite making perhaps the biggest archaeological discovery of his country in the year 2022, informed the archaeologists at the nearby Cilician Museum of Opava, this was no ordinary artifact. It was a 20-inch long, 56.5 grams heavy font of a leather belt. It was made from a thin alloy that could be torn, with a composition of more than 84% gold, less than 15% silver, and traces of other elements, such as copper and iron. Based on the style of the decoration, scientists estimated that the gold belt dates to the middle of the Late Bronze Age, around the 14th century BC. Artisans decorated the surface of this buckle with a series of five large concentric circles, surrounded by smaller concentric circles and an enclosed border decoration, giving it a cosmological design focused on solar circles. There is a lot yet to be discovered about the importance of art on the buckle and why the motive was important in that era, but it is clear that it is indeed important. Was it a warning or was it a map concerning certain planets? It's yet to be discerned. The Ancient Goatman A ram stands in the British Museum against the flowering shrub. It is made of startling gold, shell and lapis lazuli and stares back at observers. If it could speak, this goat would tell us what life was like in Ur, one of the very first cities of the human world. Ur was founded in 3800 BC 
and was one of the prominent cities of the Mesopotamian civilization. This goat effigy, which is now known as Ram in a Thicket, was found inside the Royal Cemetery of Ur and is thought to be from around 2500 BC. The Royal Cemetery is now colorfully known as the Great Death Pit, yet why the Ram in a Thicket was there is a huge mystery, not only for its purpose, but also for its significance in old Mesopotamian culture. In fact, the ram wasn't even alone. It came in a pair and was found acting as a support for a bowl. The Treasure of Troy No, we are not talking about Helen, the woman for whom Troy went to war with the Greeks. That story may or may not be true, but the Troy city was very real, despite being dismissed in the past as a myth. In 1871, Shilliman began excavating the site of Hisalik and came across the remains of a city which matched most of the description from Homer's epic Laliad. He decided to keep digging there in hopes of finding the treasure of King Priam. Legend has it that after Greek soldiers hidden inside a wooden horse threw open the gates of Troy 3,500 years ago, the conquerors made off with an immense treasure known as the Gold of Priam. Shelleman believed that Greeks mustn't have plundered all the royal treasure, and if his discovered city was Troy, indeed then some of it must be buried there somewhere. And would you believe Shelleman stumbled upon the treasure of Priam entirely by luck? When he was straightening the side of the trench face on the southwestern side of the site, he is said to have had a glimpse of gold in it. Among the most spectacular discoveries were diadems, made of hundreds of gemstones and artifacts and jewellery made of hammered gold. It is believed that Shilliman smuggled that treasure out of Turkey in his undergarments and took it to Germany. However, the Soviets then captured it during World War II and took it to Moscow, where it has remained to this day. But did this gold hoard actually belong to the characters of the Trojan myth? If yes, then do these legends have inklings of truth to them? The Gold of Saka when we talk about nomadic people of antiquity, they are often pictured as hunters and gatherers who had next to nothing to their name. But the Saka people of the first millennium BC were different. The horse lords of the Eurasian steppes considered their quadpedal friends as their most precious possession, so one may not expect them to leave anything but horse bones and hides. Interestingly, Sakas had a taste for beautiful sceneries when choosing locations for their cemeteries, and one such cemetery at Eliki Sazi has a shocking discovery to be made. In 2018, archaeologists were digging up the grave of a young Saka archer who was barely 18 when he passed, but appeared to be part of the elite of the nomadic tribe. Buried with his customary weapons, a bow, arrows and a dagger, he was heavily decorated with gold, a weighty spiral-shaped torque around his neck, the bronze dagger under his right hand was sheathed in an ornate gold scabbard, and stylized deer and other animals were picked out in gold granules that reflected their hunting traditions. These items also had inlays of turquoise, lapis lazuli, and other stones. The archaeologists were lucky that the grave was sheltered from looters because of a structural collapse, unlike many other graves in the same cemetery, devastatingly plundered over the ages. Also, with such looting, the knowledge was lost that could give us more insight into Sakas and how they would have accumulated their wealth and why exactly gold was so imperative for them. Thanks for watching Crunch. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share. Tell us in the comments if you would like to see the second part of this video.